Brazilians are voting in perhaps the most divisive presidential election in decades. The leftist former president, Luiz Inácio Lula da Silva, is hoping to make a political comeback. Uh, here he is casting his vote just a, an hour or so ago, just after the polls opened. Uh, most opinion polls favour the 76-year-old, but it's unclear of whether he can get the 50% in the first round he needs to go straight through, or whether a second round will be required at the end of the month. Uh, a few minutes after Lula Silva voted, the incumbent Jair Bolsonaro cast his vote. Uh, he has not committed to accepting the result if he loses. Uh, an indication of the outcome is expected late on Sunday local time. Our correspondent in Brazil, Katie Watson, has this update. There are nearly a dozen candidates in this presidential race, but only two men who really matter. The front runner is former leftist president Lula da Silva. He was at one time the most popular politician here in Brazil, but he fell from grace over corruption scandals, spent time in prison. Those charges have since been annulled. And on the other side of the political spectrum is his rival Jair Bolsonaro, currently president, a man who is known for his patriotism, family values and conservatism, but he's also known for his disdain of democracy and that's the big concern uh, in this vote. Basically, over the weekend, the uh, latest polls showed that Lula could win this, this vote in one round, avoiding a runoff later in the month. But actually, he could get more than 50% of the votes. And Jair Bolsonaro is currently trailing him by about 14 percentage points. But there's also a very real possibility that Jair Bolsonaro won't accept those results. He's called the polls a uh, lie. His supporters agree with that. They say that the only way um, that this could be a real vote is if Jair Bolsonaro wins. There's certainly a lot of tension over the vote today. See whether he will accept the results if the polls are correct. Let's speak to Richard Lapper, uh, author of Beef, Bible and Bullets, Brazil in the Age of Bolsonaro. Uh, Lula da Silva, as we've just heard, seems to be really quite far ahead in the polls. But uh, Jair Bolsonaro, who said the only outcome for him would be uh, uh, arrest, death or victory. So how dangerous is the situation at the moment? I think it's very tricky indeed. I mean, the results in the balance, as Katie said, um, or, or rather the, this result in terms of the first round tonight, um, it looks as though we could well go to a second round. I mean, Lula's been extending his lead since March last year. So 18 months of very steady polling in his favour and the lead is quite big and all the polls that simulate second round, the second rounds at the end of this month, um, say that Bolsonaro will win. Now, Bolsonaro is whipping up his supporters into uh, quite, a, quite a state about this. Um, it's very possible that there'll be street demonstrations this week if Lula wins. As, we, as you've said, Bolsonaro has repeatedly insisted that uh, he will, not only that he'll win, but that he won't accept the result, that, 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 that he's, he's quite ready, clearly, to make allegations of fraud. Yeah, I mean, it's a mandatory voting system and it's an electronic system. How accurate has that been in the past? Because Bolsonaro's attack on it seems, well, almost Trumpian, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, look, this, this, this system has been in place since 1996. Bolsonaro and his sons have been elected under it without any problems whatsoever. The only time, the first time that Bolsonaro started talking about the injustices of this electronic electoral system was in July last year, four months after the polls were showing him trailing to Lula. So I, I kind of think, I take these accusations with a pinch of salt. He's not provided any evidence really. And the, the, the accusations have been thrown out by the Brazilian uh, courts. So, you know, there's, there's, this, this does really look, um, it, it does, it looks, a, it looks as though it's going to be a fairly fair election, to be quite honest. Uh, of course, there's been chronic mishandling of the economy, the pandemic and things as well. This seems to be very much a philosophical divide. And I wonder how much of that can be seen on the streets and in the rural areas as well. Who, who has the most support, for example, in the, in the countryside of this huge country? Well, look, I mean, the big, the big factor, and you hinted at it there, in this election, I think, will be the economy. There's no question that over the past three or four years, Brazilian, ordinary Brazilians are really doing badly. 
Um, you know, the average wage in Brazil, uh, I take these from official figures, about £500 a month. And you go out in uh, a city like Salvador, where I am at the moment, or Sao Paulo, and, you know, prices are, are, are London prices in many cases. Um, this is really, it's become very expensive for ordinary people. Their living standards have declined. We've got very high levels of an in informality and unemployment. So people are, people are tired of this and they look back fondly to the days of uh, Lula's government in the, in the 2000s when Brazilian living standards were improving. Now, the problem is that when if Lula wins, he's facing very different circumstances in terms of you know, trying to bring those halcyon days back. And it's it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a very, very uh, difficult government, I think. There are going to be lots of challenges for him. Richard Lapper, thank you very much indeed for joining us here on BBC News. Thanks.